you're new here, welcome. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can achieve this Kingdom Hearts inspired body paint. As most of you know, I am a huge Kingdom Hearts fan, and so once I saw this online, I knew that this was something that I wanted to recreate on my body because it is actually a desktop wallpaper that whenever I came across it, I just thought it was so gorgeous and it looked very intricate and very detailed and I thought it would be fun to try and paint it on my body. And I absolutely love how it turned out, especially because it was incredibly challenging. One, because I really can't draw to save my life, so body paints are always a little bit more difficult for me, but I love doing them so it's not gonna stop me. Two, because it is so detailed and intricate, like it's stained glass, like every little piece is different and it's connected, and so I definitely took some creative liberties throughout it to try and make it a little easier because otherwise I would probably be here for like three days or something. And lastly, because I'm having to hold my phone up and paint it in reverse, and also, Sora is upside down, so there's that too, which I, for someone who can't really draw to begin with, and then you're doing it on your body and you're trying, it can be kind of difficult, but I love how it turned out. So this is definitely one of my favorite looks that I've done, just because Kingdom Hearts just holds a special place in my heart. So to do something like this that is so unique is really fun for me, and I'm really happy that I have the opportunity to do it. So anyways, with all that being said, if you guys are interested in seeing how you can achieve this Kingdom Hearts inspired body paint, then just keep watching. Hey guys, so to get started, I'm going to be taking my Book of Benny Beauty Fringe Benefit Primer and applying this all over my face. Before moving on to my foundation, I'm going to be taking my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation in Light Neutral and applying this all over my face using my It Cosmetics Blurring Foundation Airbrush Brush. Next, I'm going to be taking my Book of Bunny Beauty Cream to Powder Foundation in Mocha and just applying this to all the areas that I would like to contour before blending that out. Next, I'm going to be taking my ColourPop No Filter Concealer in number 14 and applying this to all of the areas that we now want to highlight and brighten. So this is under my eyes, under my cheekbones, and my forehead. I went ahead and did my eyebrows off camera, and so I'm going to be taking my Smashbox 24 Hour Photo Finish Primer and just applying this all over my eyelids before moving back over to the concealer and just blending that out after it has been able to sit for a little bit. I'm going to be taking my Airspun Translucent Powder and just setting that so it doesn't crease while we move on to eyeshadow. I'm going to be taking this yellow eyeshadow and starting to apply it onto my eyelids before remembering that I actually want to start off with this nude color and apply this all over the lid, especially on the crease. I'm then going to be taking my white eyeshadow and just apply that onto my brow bone so we have a nice highlight. And then I'm going to be going back into my yellow eyeshadow and apply that to the inner corner of the other eye like we were intending to do before. I'm also going to be taking this orange eyeshadow from my Morphe James Charles palette and applying that to the center of the eyelid. What we're doing is we're going for a nice rainbow eye, so after that we're going to be taking some red, applying that on the third part of our eye before going into this hot pink color. And I'm even having to go into my Morphe 35B pink a little bit because I don't know why, but Skip from the James Charles palette seems to be a little bit of a patchier formula than the rest. I'm sure it's because of the red dye that is inside of it, but I just had to use some from the other other Morphe 35B palette and it ended up working really well. And make sure you blend as you go. Since this look has a lot of colors in it, you definitely want to make sure that you're blending so nothing has any harsh lines. And then I'm going to be going into this taupe color and just applying this right above the colorful eyeshadow. So we have a simple transition shade that isn't too heavy, but definitely just helps blend into the nude and the brow bone a little nicer. I'm then going to be brushing away the excess translucent powder so we can move on to the lower lash line where I'm then going to be taking this neon green and applying this to the inner corner of the eye, slowly working my way out before we go into this light turquoise blue where we're going to be applying that right after the neon green. Following that, we're going into our darker blue, doing the exact same thing in the very center of the eye. And then we're going to be going into this nice wild violet eyeshadow and applying that on the outer corner of the eye. And Finally, to blend it up into the outside wing, I'm going to be taking this magenta color because I feel like this incorporates nicely into both the purple and the pink. I'm then going to be taking this shimmer yellow eyeshadow and I'm going to be popping this into the inner corner of the eye before moving on to the eyeliner where I'm going to be taking my NYX Epic Ink Liner and creating a nice bold wing on my upper lash line. Next, I will be taking my Maybelline Lasting Drama Eyeliner in Sleek Black and just tight lining my lower waterline before moving back to my face where I'm going to be taking my Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette, taking Medium and Dark Cocoa and just deepening the contour from earlier and really just helping set that as well. 
I'm then going to be taking my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and just bronze up my face in these same areas before taking my Physician's Formula Butter Blush in Plum Rose and applying that right over top of the contour as well to help add a little bit more color and life. Speaking of color, I'm going to be going into my Smashbox blush palette, taking True Coral and just applying this to the apples of my cheeks. Before we move on to highlight, where I'm going to be taking my BH Cosmetics Spotlight Highlight Palette, taking Dream and Glow and just applying this to all of the areas that I want to add a nice glow. Next, I'm going to be taking my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in Deep and outlining my lips. Before moving on to lipstick, I'm going to be taking my ColourPop Luxe Lipstick in On Repeat and just applying this all over my lips to add a nice pop of color. And to top it off, I'm going to be taking my Smashbox Lip Gloss in Luster and applying that on top as well. I'm then going to be prepping my eyelashes by curling them before taking my Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara and sweeping that through my eyelashes. For my false eyelashes, I'm going to be taking my Sugar Pill Eyelashes in Plush and just applying that to my upper lash line. Next, I'm going to be taking my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Milk and I'm going to be working on the body paint now. So the best way to start this off is actually by taking a bowl or a round object to trace, something that is going to be the perfect size. And then I'm actually going to be taking a smaller object. In this case, it is actually a bottle of hair gel that I can get from HEB and I'm going to be tracing that as well. I highly recommend doing this to start off with because otherwise you might end up messing up the shape of the circle and this is your foundation. Everything else you can kind of freehand, but this just really Really helped me get started. I'm also going to be drawing the parallel lines so we can kind of get the idea of where the windows are in the body paint. And then I'm going to be going into my Graftobian Pro Paint in White Swan. And I'm just going to be lightly filling in a few areas that I could want to kind of sketch out so I can figure out where Sora is going to be. So something that really helped me is the little symbols that are in the very center. I wanted to go ahead and get that first so I can figure out where my center is going to be before moving on to working on his legs and body. This is just something that is really tedious and you have to take your time with because honestly this part took quite some time anything regarding Sora took the absolute longest regarding this look because he has so much detail in his costume and you really want to focus on that because he is one of the main points of this look so I'm just lightly trying to copy exactly where his body is and as you can see I'm holding up my phone to the mirror so I can see where the reflection is so I can try to draw exactly the same I personally hate whenever you paint something it ends up being backwards on you than the image that you're referencing so this is the best way to kind of help me make it look as close to the reference photo as possible possible. Once that is done, I'm going to be moving on to adding these semicircles to the surrounding area of the circle. We're going to end up covering this up with paint later, but I wanted to kind of see exactly where it's going to be. And if I wanted to try to do that faded effect like the photo has, but I ended up mostly just covering it up with black body paint later on. Next, I'm going to be taking my Graftobian Pro Paint in Graveyard Gray, and from this, I'm just going to be outlining the few areas that we have our windows, just to not only help differentiate them from our Sora outline, but they actually do have a light blue, light gray cast in the reference photo. I'm then going to be taking my Maron Paradise Paint in Black and outlining the inner circle inside of the stained glass window. Next, I'm going to be taking my Graftobian Pro Paint in Shocking Pink and also my Graftobian Pro Paint in Megagenta, mixing them together to get this nice bright pink color. And I'm going to be creating the tiny Mickey heads that are in the very center of the stained glass window. Next, I'm going to be taking my Maron Paradise Paint in Yellow and using this to create the diamonds inside of the inner black circle as well. I'm then going to be going back into my Maron Paradise paint in black and filling in that inner circle. Now, while I'm filling this in, I want to give you guys a quick disclaimer. Since this body paint is so insanely detailed, I can only help you guys out so much simply because I am literally just copying an image from my phone onto my body. So all of the details and the thought process is literally just, it went by so fast. It was insane. So I'm going to try to walk you guys through the colors, but some details might be skipped. I heavily just recommend that if you guys do try to replicate this, just look at all of the very tiny and intense details in this painting and try to replicate them to the best of your ability. Next, I'm going to be taking my Graftobian Pro Paint in White Swan and using this to fill in the windows that we outlined earlier so we don't have to worry about it later on. 
Next, I will be taking my Maron Paradise paint in red, and using this, I'm then going to be starting to fill in the areas of Sora's costume. Now, for this, I am just heavily using a reference photo. This really helps me figure out what layers I'm going to be doing. And so, as you can see, I'm incorporating a little bit of orange. This is my Maron Paradise paint in orange. I applied a little bit of that onto his body. This really just helps add more dimension, and we're also going to be using it for his belts as well. I'm going to be going back into my Marion Paradise paint in red, and this is going to be used for his pouch that he has attached to his pants. And for that, we're also going to be needing our Graftopian Pro paint in Catalina Blue to not only fill in the X on his pouch, but to also start to fill in his pants as well. Now something important to keep in mind with this look is definitely the dimension. So we're going to be mixing some Catalina Blue and our Maron Paradise paint in light blue so we can get a different shade of blue because once again, dimension matters a lot when painting clothes, especially with body paint. So I'm going to be using this to fill in part of his shirt just so we can have that done. And then feel free to use some darker eyeshadows to add some shading to his clothes as well. Next, I'm going to be going back into my Marion Paradise paint in black, and I'm going to be using this to outline Sora's shirt just so we can help separate that from the rest of his outfit. Next, I'm going to be taking my Marion Paradise paint in teal and applying this to his little piece of shoulder armor that he seems to have, and this is once again a piece that you want to use different tones of blue to help add some more definition. I'm then going to be taking my Marion Paradise paint in orange and using this to create a few tiny stripes that he has on his shirt. Going back to my Maron Paradise paint in black, I'm going to be mixing that with some of my Graftobian Pro paint in Catalina Blue so we can get a nice dark navy that we're going to be using to apply on his pants because once again, his pants have shadows, they have different tones, so I'm going to be applying this to the lower half of his pants that fall about right under his knee. Following that, I'm going to be taking my Maron Paradise paint in yellow and using this to start on his shoes. These were actually so much fun to paint because they have so many tiny details, but they were actually pretty easy to do if you just focus on the tiny ones and just work your way up. So I'm just going to be starting off by filling in his shoes yellow, and then I'm going to be going into my Maron Paradise paint in light blue and using this to create the nice highlight that he has at the tip of his shoes before going into my Maron Paradise paint in black and using this to create some of the details such as the buckles the ends of the shoes, etc. Moving on to my Graftobian Pro Paint in Graveyard Gray, I'm going to be using this to create the rubber soles of his shoes and also the buckles attached to the straps of his shoes. Next, I'm going to be taking my Maron Paradise paint in orange, and something I absolutely love about the artwork I was referencing is they actually used orange to add some shading to his shoes, and I feel like this adds so much dimension and it just looks absolutely gorgeous, so I'm going to be doing that right now. For Sora's hair, I'm going to start off by taking my Graftobian Pro Paint in Fuzzy Bear Brown, trying to outline the spikes and kind of, you know, create some more dimension between each individual spike before going into these eyeshadows for my Morphe James Charles palette and just using these to try and get an accurate color to his hair because in the reference photo, it actually pulls a little bit more cream and blonde than it does brown. I'm even going to be using some of this to add some shading to his skin as well. I'm then going to be going into my Graftobian Pro Paint in Catalina Blue, and I'm going to be using this to add some color to his gloves that he's wearing. And I'm also going to be going into my Maron Paradise Paint in Yellow and using this to start off on the design of the Keyblade Hilt. I'm then going to be taking my Graftobian Pro Paint in Graveyard Gray and using this to create the blade on his Keyblade. This is really simple. You definitely want to have a few areas that are a little darker and a few areas that you might want to pull a little bit more white so that they have some highlights and the blade will look more three-dimensional. 
I'm then going to be going back into my Graftobian Pro paint in Catalina Blue, mixing that with some of my Maron Paradise paint in teal, and also my Maron Paradise paint in light blue, and we're going to be using this to create the effects on the stained glass window. I'm going to be jumping through these colors a lot just to add a few squares and dots to add a little bit more dimension, because something important to keep in mind with stained glass windows is that it's a bunch of different colors coming together, even if it's a subtle different in the shade, it is definitely very important to have that nice variation. We're also going to be going back into our Maron Paradise paint in black and using this to create the separation between the colors like an actual stained glass window. Jumping back into our Maron Paradise paint in yellow, we're actually going to be using the end of a makeup brush to create some perfect circles around the windows. And then we're even going to be doing the exact same thing with our Maron Paradise paint in orange, except we're going to be doing two per window on this one. Next, I'm taking my Maron Paradise paint in red and using this to create a few little X's on each window. This is kind of where I took a little bit more creative liberty because if I tried to do it perfectly, this would have probably taken me 35 years to finish. I'm then going to be going back into my Maron Paradise paint in black and using this, I'm going to be creating a few diamonds in between each window. Following that, we're then going to be filling in the areas underneath of our orange circles with the black body paint. Next, I'm going to be taking my Maron Paradise paint in teal, and using this, I'm then going to be creating the Trinity-like design that we have going on in the open spaces of the areas that alternate between each white window. We're going to have a black window that has this nice teal design inside of it. I'm then going to be going back into my Maron Paradise paint in black, and using this, I'm going to be filling in the areas outside of that Trinity design. Next, I will be taking my Graftobian Pro paint in Catalina Blue, my Maron Paradise paint in Deep Sea, Teal, and Light Blue, and using this, I'm going back to the white portion of the stained glass window and just applying these randomly throughout the window. Once again, you kind of want to have some space in between, break them apart, but also have some areas where they might be touching just to kind of add a little bit of color variation. Next, I'm going to be going back into my Maron Paradise paint in black, and using this, I'm going to be creating some separation between each of the colors and really adding that nice border effect that stained glass windows have. I'm even going to be using the black to create the detail inside of our little Trinity design. I'm going to be going back into my Maron Paradise paint in yellow, and using this I'm going to then be adding a nice border around the entire stained glass circle that we currently have. I'm going to be using that and going into my Maron Paradise paint in red, taking that and I'm going to be creating a nice dash design going around all of the yellow body paint. I'm then going to be taking my Maron Paradise paint in black, using this, and I'm going to be creating a dash in the opposite direction and also start to create some X designs. This is just a really simple way to kind of add a little bit of a border without having to do too much work or put in too much effort. And from that, I'm even going to be taking some of my Maron Paradise paint in orange. Using this, I'm going to be adding a few dots of color throughout this border. I'm then going to be going back into my Maron Paradise paint black body paint and creating another border right outside of this one. I'm then going to be taking my Graftopian Pro paint and White Swan, and using this, I'm going to be creating one more border right outside of the black border. I'm then going to be going back into my black body paint, and using this, I'm going to be creating dashed lines of different thicknesses throughout this border. And then I'm going to be taking my black body paint to add another layer right outside of this one. I'm then going to be taking my Maron Paradise paint in teal, and using this, I'm actually going to be creating some triangles facing outwards from the circle. I'm going to be doing this around the entire circle, even though, once again, we're going to end up covering it up with some black body paint later on. Next, I will be taking my Graftobian Pro paint in White Swan, and using this, I'm going to be creating a tiny bridge-like design through each little triangle. I'm going to basically be creating an M, and even use some amount of black body paint to outline the triangles that I have placed. 
I'm then going to be going into my red body paint once again, and using this, I'm going to be creating another little triangle on top of my teal triangle. Next, I'm going to be taking my Marrow Paradise Paint in Black. Using this, I'm going to be creating a little cross-like design inside of each teal triangle before using the black body paint to fill in the rest of my body. I'm going to be taking a hand rag and I'm just going to be covering up my little body painted circle before going into my Graftobian Pro Paint and White Swan on a chip brush and we're just going to be splattering that onto our body to create the illusion of some floating particles or stars and then I'm even going to be going into my NYX Holographic Glitter and this is in number six and I'm just going to be lightly splattering this all over my body. And unfortunately I didn't get it on camera, but I did take the back end of a makeup brush and some white body paint and applied a few scattered dots throughout the body paint as well. I'm then going to be going into my Anastasia Beverly Hills Moonchild Glow Kit, taking star and applying this to my collarbone and shoulder to add a little bit of highlight and glow, and then go into my NYX Crystal Liner and apply this on to the inner corner of my eyeshadow. And that is the completed look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to see next. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. The last Kingdom Hearts video in my makeup trilogy comes out tomorrow and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. It is one of my favorite looks I've ever done on my channel. Also, feel free to comment what Kingdom Hearts video game was your favorite. Was it one, two, or three, or one of the independent games in between that? Anyways, with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.